those type of games, those type of uh, contests throughout the season. The best thing to do is to be resilient when you're not playing your best, to be resilient when your opponents are playing their butts off and uh, you're able to come back and, and win the football game in the manner that we did. So we're thankful, we're appreciative. Uh, but now it's on to the next chapter. Uh, We've now to sell out for all the home games this season. First time in the history we sold out every home game in the season. ESPN announced 9.3 million viewers, most watched late game ever, um, fourth best regular season game in the last six years. ESPN fifth most watched game ever, most streamed game of all time. Peaked at 11.1 million viewers from 9 to 9:15 Mountain Time. CSU had. Uh, 25.3 million viewers through three weeks. This means a lot, a lot of eyeballs. We are the fourth team in FBS history to start 3-0 and after um, being defeated in 11 games. I just hate that we're losing, I'm sorry. Being defeated in 11 games. <laughs> yeah, the last team to do it has been a sold in 2008. Up under Tim Brewster, amen. Uh, blah, 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 the rest is about Shador. We forced four turnovers for the second straight game, the first time this happened in back-to-back -back games in 20 years. Um, this is incredible. Our kids are getting eyeballs, they're getting viewers. We can scouts out every day to watch them do what they're gifted to do. They're excelling in the classroom. The things I hear about them when they're amongst the community, they're very respectful. So not only do I want to and desire to win on the field, but I desire to win off the field as well. And I think we're winning. Let's go. Hey, Coach. Brian hey, Howell from the Daily Camera. What's going on, Well, I have a two-part question, if I could. First, how's Travis doing? Travis is doing great. Uh, got out of the hospital yesterday. He's at home uh, make, doing his schoolwork, uh, playing video games, being Travis. Uh, man, uh, he can't wait to get back to continue to do what he's capable of doing. And then the second part is with him out, at least this week. Uh, what what is the plan at corner? Like, is Cormani ready yet? No. Um, the plan at corner is uh, corner by committee. Um, That's why we practice. We're going to see who steps up and what's, takes what's, over that role. What's holding Cormani back at this point? Um, he is. He is. Hey, Coach Mick Miller, Fox 31. I'm assuming with uh, Travis being out and this being a team, you know, your first game in conference, you're going to need as many leaders and dogs on the field as possible. What are you looking for in players to be able to have that on their jersey and um, in preparation for this we, game? We're looking for the next man up. We're looking for someone else to step up and uh, take control of, of this. I mean, Travis Jay had a great practice today. He still got a little limp slightly, but competed his butt off. And we have talent. We've got to get the talent to be talented and to do what they're capable of doing. Um, but it's no one in the country could fill Travis um, Hunter's shoes. you got to understand he's a unique player. He's one of a kind. He's uh, the best player on offense, the best player on defense. That's just who he is in the country, not just on his team. So having guys step up, they just got to step up and do the job that we're asking them to do. Hi, Coach Adam Mustard Tiger, 24-7 Sports. One of the stars late in the game on Saturday was uh, at a different position in the spring. When did you identify Mikey Harrison as a guy that, that could help this football team? Um, Mikey's versatile. I mean, Mikey's kind of a small tight end and a very large receiver, which don't fare well at times. But he, he overcomes that by his work ethic, by what he applies to the game, his knowledge of the game, being where he's supposed to be doing what he's supposed to do and going full speed at all times. And practice is where, is where you build a trust with your quarterback. So just being here in the, the time that he's been here and being able to be on the field and work with Shador, that has created a, a level of trust that he, uh, he has found to be dependable in certain situations. And that's what he was. Hey, Coach, uh, Pat Graham, Associated Press. Really quick, just a clarification. With, with the lacerated liver with Travis, does it change the timetable at all for no, his sir. return? No, sir. And then my, 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 my question is, uh, when you look at Shiloh and what he does back there as a defensive back, do you see some sign, some look of yourself, or is he just a completely I, different I, player? I never compare my kids to me. That's, that's, that's not fair as a father, and a lot of fathers do that. They want their kids to walk in their footsteps and, and live their life. Um, my kids and I, our deal we made when they were young lads just, just getting into sports is you don't have to be me. 
be the best you that you can be and give me your best. That's our deal. So that that's who Shallow is. Uh, Shallow is a bona fide leader. He's a, he's a dog back there. He plays hard, plays tough. He's a physical kid, and uh, he loves the game of football, and he loves playing for Coach Kelly. He really does. Yeah. Hey, Coach. Nick Rothschild, number seven. Um, you just read all those TV numbers, and mm -hmm. you've said from the very beginning this isn't shocking to you because it's what you expected. Right. But what has been the reaction in the building to sort of the, the speed at which all the eyeballs have gotten here? Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of immune to that kind of stuff. I'm so focused and locked in on what we do from day to day, week to week. But I'm, I'm happy that I see that our um, different athletics are benefiting. I, I want to see um, – the girls basketball team hosting visits and, and bringing the girls to our games and, and bringing them to me so I could meet them and we could close as well as the boys as well as other sports as well this is a great time to bring people up for a visit so they could see the true atmosphere of what we possess and what we bring and uh, CU athletics is 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 we're rolling right now we want to keep it going but we want to help one another hi coach Ariel Rosuto, nine news how you doing very well thank you uh, so, obviously, this last game was a lot about resilience, winning in a very different way. Yes. How does that then translate into a very tough test against Oregon this week? Well, we're not trying to just be resilient. We, we don't want to get to that point where we have to be resilient. We want to get out to a great start. Um, we have not played a complete game. We have not played a game where the offense, defense, as well as special teams has all shown, shown up in the same manner. Um, if the offense is playing well, the defense is, is hot garbage. If the defense is playing well, the offense is ho horrible. Um, and special teams are, aren't special. So we got to put it all together to be able to defeat a team like Oregon in that manner. We got to put it together. Hey, Coach. Uh, Tyler King with the Denver Gazette. Um, you've been pretty open that you like to have the different uniforms every week for the team. Yeah. I know you guys did that last year at Jackson yeah. State with a different combination. Um, you guys have done that so far this season. Um, what, is, what does that mean to you to be able to do that? And what has it been like working with Nike this season here as you guys are you know, doing the different uniforms here? Well, it all starts with Smitty. We have a wonderful equipment man that uh, sees poised and understands me. So in us traveling uh, with Rick um, up to Nike to talk about these different things that, that kids desire, I mean, you got to understand the team that we're playing right now, that's what they're known for. Not They, they play great football, don't get me wrong, but the versatility in the uniforms and the, the flashiness and what they bring. Uh, I can remember <coughs> coaching high school and my kids in the locker room talking about Oregon in their uniforms, which is wonderful. So we could simulate that, emulate that, and imitate that in a certain way. It's, it's productive because kids want – Shoot, you all want options. That's why you're working, right? So you can have options to go buy what you want to buy, get what you want to get, do what you want to do. So just giving the kids those type of options is phenomenal for young men. And just for you personally, being back with Nike now, um, I know in the past you guys had a little bit of a strained relationship, but being back with them now, what's that been like for you? It's been wonderful. They've been above board. They've been excellent. They've committed to the program. They've committed to uh, me personally, and I love every bit of it. And the fans in uh, CU is a... Uh, Benefiting also, so it's a, it's a beautiful marriage. Coach Sean Keeler, the Denver Post, two-parter about physical play mm -hmm. uh, in that game. Uh, first, do you worry that some coach or someone somewhere looks at that film with that tape and says, I'm going to hit him, I'm going to hit him late, I'm going to hit Shadur late, because well, maybe that's our shot. That's not having character. I don't know how you're going to have success and longevity in this game, coaching in that aspect. Um, I don't condone that. I, I don't teach that. I don't. I, I didn't condone it when I played the game uh, from any of my teammates as well. We want to play clean. You want to be dominant, but you want to play clean because at the end of the day, you want your opponent's respect. You do. Um, I'm not saying that's what transpired, but it's unfortunate if it did. What's the gentleman's name? Henry Blackburn, I want you guys to record this and run with this. Uh, Henry Blackburn is a good player who played a phenomenal game. He made a tremendous uh, hit on Travis on the sideline. You could call it dirty. You could call it he was just playing the game of football. But whatever it was, it does not constitute that he should be receiving death threats. That that's This is still a young man. 
trying to make it in life, a guy that's trying to live his dream and hopefully graduate with honors or degree, uh, committed to excellence and go to the NFL. He does not deserve a death threat over a game. At the end of the day, this is a game. Someone must win, someone must lose. Everybody continues their life the next day. Very unfortunate. I'm saddened if there's any of our fans that's on the other side of those threats. I would hope and pray not, but that kid was just playing the best of his ability and he made a mistake. So I forgive him, see you, um, our team forgive him. Um, Travis is, he's forgiven him. Let's move on, but that kid does not deserve that. The, the old follow up to that, and I appreciate you saying that about Blackburn, because that was the other thing I was gonna ask was, do you worry that there's gonna be a target on Shooter's back given the hype and everything I, else? I, I think there's a going? target on every great player's back, isn't it? Last time I checked, that, that, that mean, but that's, that should really challenge your offensive line to do their job, shouldn't it? Because if you stop the quarterback, if you stop a Travis Hunter, if you stop a, 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 a Jimmy, if you stop Xavier, if you stop these guys, you're stopping the offense. Um, Bo Nix is pretty darn good too. We want to stop him, you know. So, but we're not going to do anything absurd or dirty. We don't we don't believe in that. Um, this is a game. I mean, we want to win, but we don't want to step outside the lines to win. Character is everything with us. Hey, Coach. Jason Jones from Buffs Beat. You've mentioned before that uh, you're the only coach Shador has ever known. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just curious, from Jackson State to now, high school, whatever it is, in these three games, has he done anything that even impresses you? I mean, his consistency impresses me. Um, when I see him in a presser, it impresses me. When I saw him on stage with uh, Stephen A., as well as Shannon, and uh, they, they've, that impressed me. He, he's a really knowledgeable kid. Sometimes he was reluctant to let his personality go, but now he's home, man. He's he, like he is. Remember when I said I'm about to get comfortable? He's gotten comfortable. So, and I know him, you know, as my son. I know when he opens up, like he's opened up. He's he's comfortable, and I'm proud of him in every aspect. I hate coach Ryan McFadden from the Denver Post. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to ask you a question about the cornerback position. Mm -hmm. We've seen a lot of young corners come into the league and make an immediate impact, whether it's year one or year two. I was wondering, why do you think that, and how much has the college game is impacted? I don't follow the NFL, so I don't know. I don't know if that's true. I have no idea. I don't really follow the NFL game, and I haven't followed it for since I was out commentating and broadcasting it, so I don't know how true that is. Um, I'm happy for those youngsters if they're able to come in and, and show immediate impact. That's not easy by any standards, but I'm happy for them, man. I wish I followed them a little more so I could ride with you on your statement. I, I just don't. I'm so into what we do and what our opponents are doing, and that's what I'm into. I don't really look outside these blinders. Jimmy Searfoss, 247 Sports. Oregon's head coach has spoken about Colorado a few times yeah. in the past. Is it personal once again this week? I respect the heck out of this man, um, what he's accomplished, stepping in, taking over program, and keeping it not only rocking steady but but accelerating it. So I'm uh, I'm not a fan of anybody. I mean, from, except for you know some of the celebrities that got a tremendous gift, but not in sports. Um, I respect the heck out of him. I love what he's accomplishing. I love who he is, the way he runs his team. I love the way he operates. So I've got a lot of respect for him. Coach Pat Rooney, Boulder Daily Camera. Uh, a little bit ago you described the defense as hot garbage, but you no, also – No, 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 no. Don't, don't, don't take my quotes and run with it. It was uh, 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 moments in the game that our defense have really played pretty good football this year. I mean, it was moments that they played badly. Yeah, moments that were hard garbage. Offense have been too. Special teams have been too. I have been too. Coaches have been too. So we all have been hard garbage in moments. The question then, I wanted to ask about the takeaways. Uh, you know, maybe yeah. you, you want improved play out of the defense, but they're still making game-changing plays, and it's guys across the board that are doing that. You know, what do you credit that to? All, uh, all we the get to the ball. We practice getting to the football. We practice a certain physicality. 
the way we practice is normally the way you play. It's hard to practice soft and then go out there and play hard, you know, and vice versa. But I attribute that to the way we attack when we're on the field. Um, when we're not playing well, that's one guy blowing the coverage, one guy not carrying the receiver, you know, in the scene, one guy not uh, being in his zone to carry that crossing route. It's always one guy just doing his own thing instead of having a unity of 11. That's what makes us hot garbage, one guy. Coach, we talked about the slower starts the last couple of weeks. Yes, sir. I was just wondering, do you believe any of that is attributed to balance of the offense run versus pass? No. And in that vein, no. do you expect Alton McCaskill back this weekend? Um, I, I, we, we took off his yellow shirt today, so he's he's practicing. He's able to be hit. He's 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 ready. I feel like he's ready. Um, I don't care what the ratio is run pass. I really don't. I care what the ratio is on the scoreboard. <laughs> That's what I care about. I don't give a darn what Ron passes. I just meant more in like in relation to the slow starts. You were saying after no, the game, no, you couldn't figure I, it out. Yeah, I don't like us to run the ball just for the sake of the ball. It's a two-yard loss or a one-yard gain. I don't, I don't believe in that. That's, everything you do in life should have a purpose. Let's be purposeful when we do things, not just do it just to do it. Hey, Coach Ryan Konigsberg from DNVR. Um, you generally have a pretty aggressive uh, approach when it comes to fourth downs and stuff like yeah. that. Just curious where that philosophy came from, and if you like to coach those moments from your gut or you know, I don't believe something in else. gut. I, <laughs> believe in you, you, it's, it's what your team is doing, what your team is showing you. Uh, I'm aggressive because I'm aggressive by nature. I'm a go getter. I'm a doer. I'm a attacker. Like I don't sit back and wait on nothing to happen. I'm gonna go make it happen. Um, one thing that I think I haven't gotten this question yet, and I can't believe it, is that um, overtime, we wanted the ball. Why well, y'all ain't asking me about that? Why did I want the ball? I want the office out there. Why? Blood ball in your door's hand. You go, girl. You go, girl. I want to put the darn ball in your door's hand. Why? Because I know what he's going to do, and it's going to put pressure on him to do something that they're not prepared, pre prepared to do consistently. That's why Charlotte said, Daddy. And he called me Dad. I'm like, I'm not your dad. I'm your coach right now. He said, uh, you putting the defense out there first? I said, no. Your brother's going to take this. And he's going to do what he does. That was really the conversation. Did you expect it to flip back the other way in overtime? What do you mean? Where after the first overtime, I felt like previously it would go the reverse. So after yeah, we, we thought, but they told us, no. They like, I don't know where it came from. Yeah, we chose offense. Yeah. yeah. So I was going to push the door out there and let him do what he's capable of doing. And it all worked out. But we're going to always, oftentimes, take the aggressive <coughs> approach. We're going to take the aggressive approach and put pressure on people and not allow the pressure placed on us. All right, thank you. Thank you. God bless. Make sure you, let's pray for that kid, man. That's that's. That's absurd for people to be threatening him. I don't mind getting death threats. I get them every week, but a kid, it's not good.